I am going to bring in somebody who is definitely not a participation trophy person and probably would not take the ring, but he's still a great friend of the show. <laughs> yes. Uh, of course, that is uh, NFL on CBS lead NFL insider Jonathan Jones. Jonathan, if you were Russell Westbrook, would you want a championship ring if the Lakers won it all? You know, I would not publicly state that I wanted one. If the Lakers were to follow the unwritten rule and send me one, I wouldn't be upset about it, <laughs> but I'm not going to publicly call for it. Yeah, it's a nice ring. So really, Patrick Beverly kind of dimed him out then by putting yeah. it on his podcast. But P- Pat Bev wants a ring, too, because he was a Laker. That is true. He said suited and booted. Yeah. Jonathan, thanks yeah. so much for joining us today. Let's talk a little NFL. So who do you think deserves, speaking of good vibes, like who deserves to be feeling the best now that the draft is over, basically free agency is over? Which team do you feel like should be feeling the most confident, deserves to feel confident right now? Wow. You know, I I can think of a lot for a lot of different reasons. I mean, obviously, if you want to start at the top, you want to talk about a Super Bowl contender, right? Obviously, the Chiefs are always going to be there no matter if they draft a couple guys or or no one. But uh, the Eagles and how they were able to add so much depth and you talk about championship windows, right? The fact that they have a starting 11 on both sides that is able to go out there and win them the NFC title game before the draft and to get some guys in there who will keep you competitive for the next three to five years when uh, some of those guys are, are going to move on and retire or you lose to free agency, um, you know, those were big. You look at the Seattle Seahawks and how they got, in my opinion, the best wide receiver and, in my opinion, the best corner in the draft uh, picking where they did. Uh, those are great vibes. And then, of course, the Carolina Panthers picking first overall and getting – uh, their quarterback of the future after wandering in the wilderness the last five years post Cam Newton. So uh, those teams, for various reasons, should be all feeling great right now. Jonathan, what do you expect Anthony Richardson to hit the field for the Indianapolis Colts? Based off of what I had heard from um, scouts, personnel executives, coaches around the league pre-draft, um, he shouldn't have to see the field in 2023. Um, that he just everyone was saying he was a year away. Now, of course, you want him to get experience out there. And so if it's the Colts aren't all that competitive and you get to December and you get him some meaningful reps out there, then great. All that said, what what folks were saying they would do with Anthony Richardson before the draft may not be congruent with what the Colts will do with Anthony Richardson now that they have drafted him. And so I would anticipate they're going to give him every opportunity to win the top job. It's going to be up to him, obviously, in training camp. Um, and even before that, but I'm not going to be surprised if he's not the week one starter just based off of what everyone had told me about how he's just not yet ready to lead an NFL team at the quarterback position. Obviously, it doesn't mean that he won't be, but if you're looking for that, you know, a week after Labor Day, that might be a little too early. Jonathan Jones is joining us, CBS Sports NFL insider, lead insider. Okay, so in that vein, which rookie quarterback do you think landed in the best spot for them? Well, I think... Or in the best situation, maybe I should say. In the best situation. No, I mean, look, if you're Will Levis, for example, uh, there's not a ton of pressure on you in Tennessee. You have the incumbent there. You have the guys that they picked last year in Malik Willis who didn't impress them very much. And so you can already start to impress without even really getting on the football field, at least as a starter, uh, in a backup role. If you're Bryce Young, obviously... um, you're the most uh, NFL ready. You go to a team that traded up for you and you specifically, and you are surrounded by some really smart offensive minds. First at the head coach position in Frank Reich, you have Jim Caldwell as a senior offensive uh, assistant, Thomas Brown, the offensive coordinator, Josh McCown, the quarterback's coach. Um, they've added some, some speed and some veteran uh, leadership at the wide receiver spot. They've really solidified the offensive line the last couple of years. And you're in a division that I don't know if the Panthers are going to win it, but they certainly have the opportunity to be competitive in the NFC South uh, in Bryce Young's year one. So for all those reasons, I would say Bryce. But if you're looking at, hey, I just want to go out there, learn the playbook, not have too much um, on my shoulders right now. You know, Will Levis is probably that guy if that's the way you look at the question. Jonathan, what are you hearing around the league, uh, the reaction to the Texans trading up from 12 to 3 and now possibly being a really bad team and not having a draft pick next year seems kind of scary. So, 
here's what I can tell you about that move. I understand them going up or taking C.J. Stroud at two. Totally get it. Um, don't play around and get Will Anderson at two, then come back and trade up to get your quarterback. You're not winning in this league without a quarterback. Okay, that's great. But the Tennessee Titans were only trading up from where they were 2-3 um, with the Arizona Cardinals if C.J. Stroud were there. And so once they're not there, um, once C.J. Stroud is not there, Tennessee Titans aren't trading up anymore. Now, it may have been a nice little master stroke by Arizona Cardinals GM Monty Austinfort to make the Texans believe that someone else was coming up to number three for Anthony Richardson. Um, but it wasn't going to be the Titans. And so I, I did take, and a lot of people took issue with how much the Texans gave up to go back up to three for the best defensive player in the draft. I don't think they needed to give up that much no matter what, but they certainly didn't when they may have been um, sort of, I don't know, going against themselves, if you will, to get that number three spot. So I did think they gave up too much. If you do wind up getting two cornerstone pillars of the franchise, ultimately no one's going to care whether you gave up a first-round pick who had a 50-50 shot of working out three years down the road or not. Um, but it did seem that night and certainly what I've learned since then like a lot to give up. Jonathan Jones is our guest. Okay, a couple more for you, Jonathan. I said who deserves to be feeling best about themselves. Who do you have major doubts about? I mean, was there anyone whose draft and free agency just really didn't make a lot of sense to you and someone who you think maybe took some steps backwards? Well, I, I think, you know, the Cardinals we just talked about, they showed a lot about what they expect to be in 2023 um, by the moves that they made. I'm not saying they were the wrong moves of course, but collecting all that draft capital that they did, knowing that the quarterback's going to be out, what, half the season, maybe more? you got a first-time head coach. You lost a lot um, in free agency. There needs to be a full sort of rebuild there. The Cardinals uh, help themselves in the future, no question about it, but, you know, the Cardinals aren't going to be very good in 2023. Um, and so I think that's the first team that comes to mind. The other team, I really liked – what the Detroit Lions, who the Detroit Lions drafted. I didn't like where they drafted. <laughs> a lot of people didn't like where they drafted those guys. But ultimately, uh, that you're able to get in, um, you know, a Jameer Gibbs and a Brian Branch and a Jack Campbell. Well, yeah, would you have taken those guys where they did? Most around the NFL, considering positional value, wouldn't have. Um, and so that raised an eyebrow. But the fact that they got those guys, you know, okay, I think that they're going to be able to continue to load up uh, and be successful in their division. Jonathan, there's a story that came out today that the California and New York attorney generals are investigating the NFL uh, amid claims of gender discrimination and harassment. Early stages of this just announced today. What do you think is at stake here for the league? Well, I can tell you that, you know, I have written, talked about, reported on, uh, asked questions about um, the sort of racial makeup and racial diversity among NFL clubs at the highest level for years. And what the NFL, uh, from a league office standpoint, has always been able to say is sort of, and I'm paraphrasing, of course, but we can lead the horse to water, but we can't make these clubs do uh, what we want them to do. And what we want them to do is be more reflective of what we're trying to do in the league office. And I know the league office has gotten high marks on a racial and gender diversity report card over the years. Um, I know firsthand that it is uh, a very diverse league office. Um, but, of course, they're going to have to, and these are the attorneys general, they're going to have to investigate these um, allegations of pay discrimination and uh, gender discrimination. Obviously, the NFL uh, is going to have to open up its books and its doors uh, on this. Uh, but I do know that the league has very outwardly been very proud of its uh, diversity in the league office, and now they're going to have to show it. Uh, for these uh, these two AGs. Jonathan Jones, CBS Sports NFL Insider. Jonathan, can't tell you how much we appreciate it. Thanks so much. Hope you get a little time off, and we'll catch up with you again soon. Hey, appreciate it, y'all. Hey, Jonathan, Sixers and Six, you like that prediction there? I heard you were talking trash you know, about <laughs> Well, no. I mean, goodness, that was a really bad game. I was at it. I'll be at game five. Probably going to be a closeout game for the Celtics. Oh, get out of here. Get out. Well, what happened to your Bruins, buddy? No, I don't want to do that. Oh, uh, not don't right. Do that. Don't do it. Jonathan, thank you. We'll talk to you again soon. Appreciate it.